4, it should put a PNG file on your desktop and you can see it here. So you'll notice it takes a screen capture and put your icon on the desktop as a PNG right here. So again, how did I do that? In Firefox, I found the noun project. I'll back up a little because I start my video. Again, the best place to find icons, noun project, the noun project, the, the noun project. Again, and then you type in what you're looking for. I was looking for video camera. Then I found the icon I liked, and I took a picture of it by using the Command Shift 4 and draw a box around it. And then you have a picture of it. So once I have a picture of it, I can bring it into Illustrator and redraw it. Um, Inside Illustrator, I'm going to start with a new file. I'm not going to worry about the artboard yet. Like I just told you, we're going to make different artboards for the different sizes. The most important thing is that I'm going to keep it in the RGB color space right here. RGB color space right here. Because the RGB color space is what you want your graphic to be for, um, for the screen. Remember, CMYK color space for printed things. RGB for things for the screen. How do you change the color space? Under the advanced option in the new window, you have CMYK RGB right there. This is where you can change it. So again, if you're making things for the screen, try and get the correct color space. The problem you'll run into is the colors will shift when you save. Like if I did something in CMYK and I save as a JPEG, it might be a little bit different than it did because JPEG is going to save an RGB. In fact, it'll put the sRGB um, ICC profile on the file. Maybe they'll teach you that in Photoshop class. How about we just move on? Let's make sure it's an RGB. Again, to place your graphic in there that we stole off the internet, we can place it in easily by going underneath File, Place, File, Place, and it should be on the desktop, like I said, in a PNG format. And here it is. and I can draw a box and put it in there. There it is. Now again, it's in bitmap format. Um, there's some options that we'll learn about in the next lesson when we do the artist project that'll take your bitmap image and convert it automatically to a vector. Okay, it's called image trace. The download, downfall of doing that though is that it doesn't always do it beautifully. Yes? What happened? Someone deleted all of my files. Where? Off the computer. You don't have a backup? No, I don't. I'm just, I'm just saying that like, everything's fine. Okay. It happens. Where did you hide? Did you put it on the desktop? No, in my documents. In your documents folder? Yeah. Um. I'm just, I'm just okay. It probably most likely... Um, Probably wasn't the student, might have been the administrators who come and they clean out the computer and, and put virus protection on and do things like that sometimes. So I would never leave anything I want special on my computer. You can try and leave it there, but most likely um, they were updating it. I doubt a student would do that. Hopefully I would. Okay, let's, let's move on. So I'm going to redraw this again in Illustrator. Um, you can lock this layer if you want. Uh, how do I lock that layer? Oh, look at all these things I got open. Whoosh. Got way too many things open. Whoosh. 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 Okay, some of the things we'll look at, of course, will be Pathfinder again today. I'm going to talk again about Pathfinder. Remember, we used that last class when we were making a little pair thing and we were cutting things out. Um... So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to um, draw my shapes. This is a, a shape um, that looks like a rectangle, right? Very easy. Again, lock my layer, and I'm going to make a new layer so I don't mess with this. Okay, so a simple rectangle with oval edges. You see that? You have an oval edge, rectangular, rounded rectangle tool. There it is. I'm going to either put my cursor in the upper left corner is usually where I start. 
If I hold my left mouse down, oop, I don't want a gradient. Again, in the upper left corner here, and I'm going to draw a rounded rectangle. Beautiful. Yes? If I have uh, kind of abnormal shapes that I'm going to be drawing over, should I use the pen tool? I would use the pen tool. Yeah. If you're going to use something that is like, a, remember the animal that we're drawing? I would use the pen tool if you feel comfortable. Here, this is a very simple thing. It's circles, rectangles, and things like that. Okay. Next, for the lens part right here, I'm going to actually draw a, a rectangle like I just did and then manipulate the rectangle. Probably the easiest way to make certain shapes, let's say this shape right here, very easy to make a rectangle with the oval edges and then manipulate the other side. Don't even have to use the pathfinder. What I would use is I would remove some points and then move points. Watch how I do this, and then you think about what I'm doing. Again, if I'm going to make this shape over here, I'm going to put my cursor in the upper corner here, and I'm going to kind of draw the shape the way I want it, kind of out to something like this. Then what I would do is there is a minus tool, a minus tool. What is a minus tool? Well, there is in the pen tool, there's a delete anchor point. So I have too many anchor points, right? If you think about it, and let me zoom in a little bit, this is again a rectangle. I don't want a rectangle. I want it to be kind of uh, on an angle a little bit. So I'm going to use the minus anchor point and remove some anchor points like this one and this. Oh, yeah, I want to click right on top of it. So again, the minus one you could use to delete points. Don't use the delete key. If you use the the uh, this one and then click on a point and hit delete which is totally you can do that what it does though is it, it splits the object uh, and if you had a stroke that goes around it the stroke would go away between the two points so by using the minus pen tool it makes it an appropriate um, um, it's, it's like the way to do it is I guess is what I'm trying to say and if you had a stroke on and then of course it has directional arms here I don't want these directional arms because those directional arms are gonna you know, I want to just kind of bring it down a little bit. So again, by removing two points, I can either take this handle and drag it right on top of the point. Take this handle and drag it right on top of the point. Makes it a corner point. Once it's a corner point, then I can use the white arrow again, and I can drag down to where I think it should be, and then drag down to where I think it should be. And there we go. So again, by using the points and manipulating points, you can easily make things quickly. I would probably do the same thing. If you notice, we have two kind of, they look like um, film reels here. I would use probably the same techniques that I just did. This is basically a circle. I can use the circle tool, ellipse tool. And if you want to draw from the center out with the ellipse tool, I can put my cursor in the middle of this circle here and I can hold down the option key on the keyboard and I can drag a circle out. Remember the shift key will make a perfect circle. So again, I'm just using the ellipse tool and then there's a small one in the middle. I might draw that one too. So we have two of them. Then they have this kind of shape here for the film reel. I would probably use the pen tool to make that one. And then I would rotate one of them around like I did with the pedal. Remember doing the pedal? So the same idea. Um, maybe even turn these off so I can see what I'm doing. Remember, you can use eyeballs to turn things on and off. They're still there. They're just hidden. So think about that. You can use eyeballs to turn things off as you're drawing so that if you want to draw a shape that's behind the, the shape you just drew, you can just turn the eyeball off. Again, this is a shape for the film reel right here, at least in my example here. I would probably just use the pen tool, the regular pen tool, to make that shape.
and once I had that shape, then I would then rotate that shape just like I did using the petal when we did the flower, right? When we rotate it, I could use the rotation tool. Remember using the little blue, little blue thing we did? Remember the blue uh, uh, rotating point? Move that in the center. Put my cursor over top, hold down the option key, click and drag. There's one. Um, oh, no, it won't let me do it again. Let me do that again. Let me do it once. Oh, we have to do what command? What was it? Command T? D? Oh, there it was. It was D. Okay, there we go. So again, Making things in Illustrator is just thinking and planning, right? Think, hey, think, plan, think, plan. And then let's duplicate this because this one over here is just a smaller version of that. So I'm going to select all these objects right here. And I'm going to duplicate them over here and shrink it down. Shrink it down. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? Let's just use this. Whew. Okay, boy, we're just flying along now. Okay, last I have to make one more object and I'm ready to do my Pathfinder. So what I'm going to do with these objects is I'm going to cut a hole using these ones. Here's that one. So then here's up here. I'm thinking in my head how I want this to be. So here's my icon. I'm going to make a, a color video icon. So I'm going to have colored bars going across. Then I'm going to have my wheel, wheel, round shape, camera level. Have a lens there. And then of course there's a little one right there. And then of course you have your little piece of stuff. So I'm gonna have color bars going across and I want to see the color come through here in these areas. So I need to cut a hole in my icon. I need to cut holes, cut holes. Just like we did last time. So I'm just cutting holes, cutting holes, cutting holes. I'm gonna cut holes in these shapes. So when I put color bars behind it, the color comes through, right? Think of icons. They're not always solid. You can have shapes that come through. So let's do the little cutting. Pathfinder. I have all the objects selected here. I want to minus the things that are on top, right? Minus things on top. So uh, there should be one. That's the one we used last time, didn't we? Minus front. Boom! Look at that. Oh, I forgot the circle in the middle. Or maybe it did do the circle in the middle. It's just white there, I think. Is it? I hope so. Let me try another one. Minus front. Oh! Did I do that one? Maybe I didn't select everything correctly. <coughs> there we go. And then, um, oh, there was a little circle down here. That was it. There was a little circle down here, wasn't there? Let's do that. It's like a little circle somewhere right there. So I'm going to use that. And I'm going to cut a hole through that. Minus front. There we go. Hey, my circle's a little different. So I'm done. I just have to put my color bars in the background. So I can delete this graphic that I downloaded. Go away. And, of course, everything is white right now, so we can color it so we can see it. There we go. Look at that. Okay, so we have an icon. To make, to finish my icon, of course, I want to make it the appropriate size. So to make it the appropriate size, I'm going to choose one make my icon that size and then I'll make the other ones from that so again we were talking icons from 
the internet. I lost my link, my connection here. Uh, it was on Angel. If you remember Angel, how do I get the Angel? Angel, Angel, Angel. And in Angel, there should be one for the icon size right here. So again, you got the iPhone 6s is 180 by 180 pixels, 120 by 120 for the iPhone 6s, iPhone 4s, iPad, and so on. So I'm going to take this icon. I'm going to make one the right size, the correct size I want, and then I will make the other ones from that. I would probably use the largest one and then make the smaller ones from that. So the 180 by 180 looks like the biggest right now. So how do I make an object 180 by 180 inside of Illustrator? I have this object. I want to make the artboard 180 by 180. Okay? So how do I make the artboard? And then I'll take all the artwork I have. I have an icon. I'm going to shrink it all down and make it 180 by 180. So to make the artboard 180 by 180, I'm going to go to the artboard tool. It's right here. It's called the artboard tool. And I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to type in in the pop-up window. It'll actually come up with a pop-up window. And I'm going to name this artboard 180 by 180. Because I'm going to have different artboards. So I'm going to might as well name it what I want. And I'm going to type in 180 PT for point. No, we want what? PX for pixel. So again, 180 PX, not PT, PX. How did I get to this screen? Again, I got to this screen by going over here to the artboard tool and double clicking on it. Once I double click on the artboard tool, oh, it still went to PT, didn't it? Evil. Evil. Okay, we're going to have to do something to fix that. We're going to have to go to the preferences under Illustrator preferences and units and change it to pixels. So if it's not giving you pixels, you're going to have to change the units to pixels by going under Illustrator preferences units and we go to points. We want Pixels, 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 pixels. Okay, so again, where was that? It was under the preferences. Units, I changed the general to pixels. Okay, now let's go. Double click on the art tool. Oh, it says PX now. See that? PX. Okay. Now I'm going to shrink this artwork down and fit it in that window. Here we go. Shrink the artwork down. and fit it in that window. It might not fit just right. It, it's going to be close. There we go. If you don't want to scale it, you can scale it in proportion. I don't want this. There we go. Then you say to yourself, I want this icon to be exactly in the center of the artboard. How do I align my artwork to the center of the artboard? To do that is under the alignment pop-up window. If you go under window alignment, you'll see there is an alignment tool. In the alignment pop-up window, you have centering options, but it's not centering to the artboard, what you have to do is actually show more options. It's it, the, One of the things about Illustrator is it has a show more options in most of the pop-up windows. So the pop-up windows show you some of the options, but it doesn't show you all the options. Sorry to say, but that's just how it works. So in the alignment pop-up window, in the upper right corner, it says show options. In the alignment pop-up window right here, you can go where it says show options. When you pull up the show options, you'll notice it has a little align to that shows up in the right bottom right corner. If I click on that, it can say align to artboard. See where there's one there, option that says align to artboard. 
Once I say align to artboard, if I hit center vertically, ooh, that's not all the objects. We don't want that. No, that's not going to work. Woo, don't do that. Okay. Then how are we going to do this? Maybe if I group them together? Let's see if that helps it. Center. Ooh, that did uh, group them together. Group all the objects together first. How about that? See, I make lots of mistakes. <laughs> group the objects first together. Then say align to artboard. And you can do align vertical center, horizontal center. Hey, it looks good. Last thing I'm going to do is put my color bars in the background. And then I'm going to make my other, art, my other artboards with my different sizes. And I'll be done. Remember, when you save it for Apple, okay, you save in a square. It's the iOS that puts the round edges on the phone. So when you submit the app, and if you read it in the handout, they'll tell you that. And they tell you what format to save it as. What format you think we'll save it as to give it to Apple? SVG. SVG would be a great idea, but that's not right. I'll do a double check the size of the picture. The size of the... You mean the artboard? The artboard is over here. If you double click right here, you go, and this is the oh, yeah. This is the dimensions right here. You double click on the artboard tool and you can touch. What's in? Okay, let me see. It's actually PNG is what they want. They want a PNG file. So, can you type in? Yeah. Type in. Yeah. Just hit OK. Okay. Your artboard is 180 by 180. Yeah. You have to select all your artwork and shrink it down so it fits inside there. You have to scale it. You need the black arrow. You can scale it so it fits inside. What's that? Alignment pop up window. Window alignment. Yes. You have to get to the upper right corner. Show options. So it says align to in the lower right corner. I would say to align to artboard. And if you hit the center option, which is the middle one, and towards the top, the middle one from the top. So that's line right. Hit that arrow in the upper corner. Okay, so they want a PNG file. Okay. So again, after I made my icon the way I want, I, I really want some colored bars in the background for this icon, so I'm going to quickly make that. How I'm going to do that, of course, is, is I'm just going to make a rectangle tool, and I'm going to draw a rectangle, and I'm going to give it a color. And then I'm going to duplicate it a couple times, change the color, duplicate it, change the color, duplicate it, change the color, duplicate it. Change the color, duplicate it, change the color, and I think that's enough colors. So I'm going to highlight all those, and I'm going to scale them. There we go.
Boy, that looks beautiful. And then I'm going to send all these objects behind the, the icon. There we go. It's a rainbow camera. How about that? Rainbow camera. And maybe I'll make this white instead of black. Ooh, no, that's not good. How about um, we put a stroke around it? Would that make it stand up better? A big stroke? That's pretty ugly, too. Um, how about no stroke? How about we put a drop shadow? Do you remember the drop shadow? Under effects, um, stylized drop shadow. How about that? That look a little better? Gives it a little 3D look too. Yes? Uh, which one? The drop shadow? Yeah. Select your object and it's underneath effects, stylize, drop shadow. And then there's some options. Hit preview so you can see what it looks like and you can change some of the options. And then, of course, it makes it look like it stands out from the, the rainbow flag that we got in the background there. We'll call this a color. This is a color camera. This camera makes color. That's why it has there. Maybe it makes all, all the video is rainbow color. That would be kind of cool. Perfect for the hippies in the 60s. Rainbow, rainbow, rainbow colored video. Back in the 80s, I used to make backgrounds for bands. As they would be playing, I would make kind of psychedelic backgrounds. I used to do that. I used to do it with projectors and, uh, um, and slides, slide projectors. Yeah. The most famous band I ever did was uh, Rusted Root. Anybody heard of Busted Flute or Rusted Root? My, my friends didn't like Rusted Root. They used to call it Busted Flute. <laughs> They're the ones who do the uh, the song for um, for um, um, uh, what's the the dinosaurs cartoon dinosaurs um, that was the woolly mammoth one. What was that one? Was that? I have one of the videos you can watch on Vimeo if you want. Okay, so let's make our artboard and then we'll be done. Remember, this one's 180 by 180. How do I make a new artboard? This one's 180 by 180. Maybe I'll even put some text underneath it. Call it 180 by 180. There we go. Okay, so how do I make a new artboard? Well, of course, you have a... What do you think? There's so many pop-up windows inside of Illustrator. Do you think there's a pop-up window for the artboard? Sure there is. Okay. So if I go underneath window, artboards, you'll see I have one artboard here. So I'm going to go and make other ones. What was some of the other? There was one that's uh, 120 by 120, 152 by 152, 76 by 76, 167 by... So I want you to make different artboards. How do I make a different artboard? My next one's going to be 120 by 120. So I'm going to go to the Illustrator. In the artboard pop-up window, again, it's a pop-up window, you can click on the new option right here. It says new artboard right here, or you can go to the pop-up window and say new artboard there. Either way, makes a new artboard. Okay, so you say, well, what size is that artboard? Well, it's going to make it, the, the, it's going to kind of copy the last one you had. And, of course, we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the artboard tool again, double-click on it, and we're going to type in 120 by 120. Same way we changed it before is the same way I changed it again. And then I'm going to take all my artwork that's inside here and I'm going to duplicate it. And remember, you don't want to use the, the scaling by dragging like this. That's going to cause a problem. Remember, if you're going to scale, I have a drop shadow on here. If you want the drop shadow to scale in the same ratio as the other objects, you use the scale tool. It's this one right here called the scale tool. And if I double click on it, you'll see it says scale strokes and effects. Strokes and effects. Scale rectangle corners. That would probably be good. So 
using this option here, and of course, since we're going from 180, so what's 120 by 120? How many percentage do you think? 60%? 60%? Is it 60%? Oh, I guess I can't move it. Is it 60% smaller? Oh, no. I was close. No. Um, not 60. 75? No. Oh, no, 75 of the 60 RA did. Let me go back in time. Go back in time. Let me try again. What was it? Make sure all those. We're going to use 75. Let's try that. Nope, too big. See, that's why I failed math class. What would the ratio between 180 and 120 be, percentage-wise? Come on, you guys were probably good at math, weren't you? No, is that why you're in an illustration class? Oh, gosh. Okay, so that wasn't working. Uh, let's see. Scale. How about 80? No, not enough. Well, we'll just use the scale tool. How about that? Just click on it and scale it, and then move it and scale it. Click on it and scale it. Move it. There we go. And then scale it again. Yeah. No, let's cheat a little bit. We'll just use this tool for right now. Okay, there we go. And then, of course, this is 120 by 120. Type it in 120 by 120. There we go. Since yes? We're, since we're using pixels, is it better to go from 180 down to 120 instead of 120 up to 180? I tend to go down instead of going up. Does it, does it make a difference? But if you watch the videos about how to do it uh, online, they'll tell you to actually scale up in Photoshop. So if you're doing this in Photoshop, they want you to scale up. So I don't, I don't think it really matters in Illustrator, but it does in Photoshop. So if you're doing the same thing, making an icon inside of Photoshop, all the tutorials on like lynda.com and things like that, they tell you to do it to scale up and not scale down. Why? I, I, mostly because of the way it does the interpolation of the um, pixels. Right? You guys know the word interpolation? It has to reinterpret the pixels basically inside of there. Yes? When you're scaling and uh, when you use a shift key to get like the perfect circle and square, will, uh, will that not work with the drop shadow? Is that why you have to use a scale tool? Yeah, if you're using this black right here, the, the direct selection tool, if you use it to scale, um, most likely the effects won't scale the same. Well, it seems to work there. But sometimes the, the stroke that goes around the outside, do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Would give you problems. But that team seemed to work right there. Maybe because I've already changed the setting here on the scale tool. Maybe if you change this first, you can use that. Okay, so you can go through and make all the other ones the same way. I'm not going to go through that. I'm sure you could figure that out. Last thing I want to do is save it as a PNG that has all my different settings together, right? So... If you're going to present this to your client, right? Hey, I made you an icon. This icon's for your app that you're going to send to Adobe or Apple for your app, right? So you want to be able to send this to your client in all the different sizes. Hey, I know what I'm doing. I know how to make the icon all the different sizes. You're going to give me, you know, $500 for that, right? Took you a half hour to make. Hopefully, you make $500. Remember, I, told, I think I told you one time I was working for Westinghouse, right? And I, I, I was drawing a nuclear pump for my, my company, and I, I, I did a, a nuclear pump for them in like four hours. I did it really quick, and, and I remember that my, the owner of the company, Don Bush was his name, he was, he was standing there talking to the people from Westinghouse, and they're like, how much is this going to cost? And he's like, oh, $1,000. Oh, only $1,000, he said. Sitting, I'm sitting next to him, it only took me four hours to make that. <laughs>
I'm not getting a thousand dollars. I was like, you know, making, I think I was making like twenty dollars an hour or something like that. You know, fifteen dollars an hour is all I was making. You know, they're paying me, you know, forty bucks or something. Then you know, they're getting thousand dollars for. Okay, so I'm going to present this with all my different sizes. One of the downfalls that you have of saving, of course, in Illustrator is if you go under File, Save As. Uh, it's going to save an Illustrator file, AI, that's great. And this is my icon um, design, icon design, save it, that's fine. If you want to export out each one, you need to choose and designate which artboard you want to send out. Of course, I should probably call this one 120 by 120. Okay, there we go. So you could select the artboard here in the artboard window. And, and you can designate which one you, so depending, so if you can save as a PNG, let's say, and you want to save the different versions, you can click on the artboard and it will save that version. So if I want to save the 180 by 180, um, in the artboard window, I click on the 180 by 180. If I go under file, save for web right here, or export, either one will save as a, as, as a um, PNG. Save for web or export. If you go under save for web, you can choose PNG 24. It's fine. If you read this stuff on Apple, PNG 24 is what they want. Again, notice it's 180 by 180. Okay. You can actually do all the settings here too by changing the percentage. So I can save it here and hit save. And then this is going to be my icon design 180 by. 180. And again, PNG. And so it saves as a PNG. That was underneath. So again, depends upon which one you select. It'll only save one artboard as a PNG. It won't save all of them at one time. It only saves one artboard. If you want to save it as a collection that you can send to somebody so that they can see them all together in a group, that they can open. Let's say your client, you're working for somebody, they're not going to have Illustrator most likely. None of the people I know have Illustrator. You know, you need to save as a PNG, or not a PNG, I meant a, save as a PDF, right? So if I go underneath, it doesn't matter which one you have selected, it'll save them all together as a group in PDF. So if I go underneath File, Save As, and choose PDF, Notice it says all artboards. See there? All artboards. Or you can choose a range of artboards down here. Okay, so I only have two artboards, so it has one of two. But let's say you had 20 artboards. You can say, oh, I only want to save in this one PDF, the 1 to 10, and then you can save another one from 10 to 20 or something. Do you see that towards the bottom here? This is the PDF option. Or you can say, of course, all of them together. So I only have two, so it doesn't really matter. I can hit save. Um, inside here, um, I'm going to leave the default settings. A little bit later on, towards the end of this class, we'll talk a little bit about compressing. And then the other option is preserve Illustrator editing capability. Sometimes I turn it off, and I'll explain that a little bit later. Let's not do that today. So if I save that, you'll notice I can email that PDF to my client. And if they open it up, it should show the it doesn't show the text underneath it, and that is a problem. I've noticed that before. Uh, in order to do that, I put the text on top of the thing. You would put the text inside it. I, I've noticed that problem before. Um, there is a way around it, I think. There's a way to, to do that. I just can't remember. Does it take time to change the background colors to more of like Mm -hmm. um, I just—it's just a rectangle. Mm -hmm. I just choose, um, yeah. I just choose from the palette mm -hmm. the option, right? Yeah. Or I can, um, I can choose some colors from the other and the website and just um, mm -hmm. pick up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's—I want you to do that, and we're going to move on to something else. So this is your practice. Hopefully, you, you can make one in a short amount of time. I know it looks like I did it very quickly, but. I wanted to get through it all before we left today. 
I made a video right here.